As a kid, I remember being fascinated by the Amish. I remember going to Lancaster, Pennsylvania as a child and seeing all the other people who also felt this fascination with their lifestyle. Even as an adult, I've been there myself and find how they live to be peaceful and simple and wonderful. So today I wanted to share with you 29 frugal tips from the Amish. What can we learn from them? What can we learn from their lifestyle, the way that they live their life, and the joy that they seem to have? Hi everybody, my name is Sarah. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you don't know me, I am the owner of FrozenPennies.com. I am a financial coach, and we are, as a family, debt-free. So let's get started and dive right into the Amish. Number one, live within your means. You know that they're living within their means. You know that their lifestyle is simple. So they're not going above and beyond their spending. They're only spending what they can afford. There are certain rules or bylaws that they need to follow. And this happens to be one of the most important. Number two, budgeting. Now, I don't know this for a fact, but I am willing to bet you that they have a pretty decent budget going on. Pencil, paper, ledger, whatever it may be, I bet you that the Amish are budgeting. They know how much money they've got coming in and how much money they've got going out and what they can afford. Number three is actually my favorite, simple living. There's this movement going on I've noticed on YouTube about slow living. Have you seen this? It's essentially the process of slowing down and enjoying things from eating your food to not packing your schedule and having some downtime. When I think of slow living, I do think right away of the Amish. They always have this very relaxed, non-rush. You never hear them say, I don't have time for that. They embrace a minimalist lifestyle instead of focusing on non-essentials and luxuries. Number four, DIY skills. They got skills. In their community, if they don't have the skills to do something, they know somebody who can help them or teach them. Learning basic DIY and maintenance skills will help you to not have to hire somebody to do the job. Number five, homesteading. Oh, those farms in Pennsylvania. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Raising your own food, growing your own vegetables, raising your children as a community, being as self-sufficient as you possibly can. There's such an attraction there to that for me. A simple life of homesteading. I have this yearning for that kind of life and I have seriously thought about having a one acre homestead here. It just never seemed to happen. Number six, buy in bulk. I've heard from many of the viewers, there are Amish stores that sell things in bulk near where they live. Not only is this one of the ways that they live by, but they also encourage others to do so by selling at their stores in bulk. For us, if we don't necessarily need 100 pounds of flour, it might be fun to find somebody else who wants to share that 100 pounds with you that way you can divide it up and split the costs, saving you money on flour. This is one that I try to do a lot in my life, barter and trade. I love to be able to offer somebody something in trade for their services. It's one of my favorite things to do, and I know I've mentioned my friend Catherine before. She is an excellent seamstress. There were times when I would make her a lasagna dinner in order to trade services, she would hem a dress. If you know somebody who's an expert in a service that you might need, you might wanna have a chat with them and consider maybe taking it out in trade or bartering services. Number eight, handmade gifts. This is super fun. For years, I have made these little quick breads for friends and neighbors around the holidays as just a little Merry Christmas, thinking about you kind of thing. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna leave a link to a blog post that I actually have about these little breads with the recipes in them too, because they're so special. I mean, they're just small little things. Other handmade gifts that are super fun are things like pillowcases. I made a couple of years ago, a group of friends and I got together and I made everybody pillowcases because you can never have too many pillowcases. A lot of people have pillows on their bed, but their sheet sets only came with one set of 
pillowcases. So there's something super special about giving them a personalized set of pillowcases. Number nine, carpooling. Now, if you know anything about the Amish, you know that the Amish don't have cars. The Mennonites and other branches of the Amish do have cars, but the Amish themselves don't own vehicles. They are allowed to ride in vehicles. So when maybe a Mennonite family down the road is going to the grocery store, many times they'll carpool together so they can all go together. We should do more carpooling. Number 10 is great, limit technology. Now, when I was a kid, I remember them not having technology. But while I was doing some research into this, I did find that some of them are now conforming to the technology era and adopting some of the technology for themselves. Number 11, cook at home with all of the abundance of food that they've raised and the preservation of that food. The majority of the time, the Amish do not go out to eat. They cook at home. I know that there are special occasions when we have seen the Amish out at restaurants while we're visiting. However, the majority of the time, they cook at home, saving them lots and lots of money. Number 12, repurpose and recycle. Do not let anything go to waste if you don't have to. Always find a way to repurpose it, recycle, use it up, wear it out, use it for something else. Find a way to reuse it, if at all possible. Number 13 is also one of my favorites, sustainable living. Do our very best to be kind to the earth. Compost, recycle. Don't buy prepackaged food so you have to throw away the packaging. Be as kind to the environment as you can. Now being green also really can save you money. Buying mason jars for storage instead of Ziploc bags that you purchase and throw away is not only kind to the environment, but cost effective. Number 14, energy efficiency. Because they don't have electricity in their homes, they rely on things like oil lanterns and candles. This helps immensely with energy efficiency. Many of their refrigerators, for example, run on propane instead of electricity, also super energy efficient. Cooking in the winter over a wood stove instead of gas, propane, or electricity will also save money. Number 15, no credit cards. This goes right back to number one, living below your means. Without credit cards, you don't have to worry about living above your means or going into debt. You don't have them, you don't have to worry about them. If you don't have the cash for it, you don't buy it. Number 16, handmade clothing. Along with handmade clothing is essentially a capsule wardrobe. Many of the pants and the dresses can be mixed with the aprons and the hats. Having a specific amount of handmade clothing in a closet means that you essentially have a capsule wardrobe. These are the things that we can learn. Now, maybe you are not going to make your own dress. Maybe you can. Maybe you have the skills to do so. Maybe you can find the fabric in a clearance bin or maybe repurpose fabric from another dress in order to make yourself a skirt. However, the majority of us are not going to make our own clothing. But we can consider the capsule wardrobe. A capsule wardrobe is just essentially a mix of clothes, maybe 30 pieces, that allow you to mix and match. Everything goes with everything. For example, you have a blue pair of pants and a black pair of pants. You have a white shirt and a pink shirt. You can mix and match those two shirts with those two pairs of pants in order to make yourself a couple of different outfits. If you add two different cardigan sweaters to that capsule wardrobe, you then have more outfits to choose from. This means that the amount of money that you spend on clothes decreases as well as the storage space that you need to house those clothes. Another lesson we can learn is if we're not going to make our own clothes, we can at least learn to mend our own clothes. Collect rainwater. Rainwater can be used for many things. It can be used to water our gardens out back. It can be used to water our plants inside. It can also be used, if filtered correctly, to do things like wash our dishes or flush our toilets. Consider rainwater collection as a lesson that we can learn from the Amish. Number 18, things like home birth and natural remedies. Home births are actually making a comeback. 
with midwives and doulas coming to your home, it is possible to give birth to children at home. Home remedies are also gaining in popularity. I know for myself, there are quite a few things that I try before I turn to over-the-counter medications. For example, if I feel like I have a headache coming on, I'll do a couple of things. I'll drink some water. I will try some essential oils. I will also try a little bit of salt because maybe my electrolytes are off before I take Advil. I'll even try a cup of coffee or even maybe a nap. If none of those things work, then I'll go for the Advil. Number 19, community support. I always think of barn raisings. When I think of the Amish and I think of community support, I think of the entire community getting together to help raise the barn, build the barn for new families or families that need it. The Amish have an amazing sense of community. They're always willing and available to help their community members do things that need to be done. Say there's an illness and they need help with the crops that year. They all get together to help each other out. We should really adopt more community support. I know that in my community, it's a big deal. We always pull together for somebody. If somebody is sick and they need some extra money, an event where there's basket raffles and food for sale that people have donated is a big deal. And it really does help raise some money for those in need. Number 20, avoid consumerism. Resist the urge to run out and buy the latest and the greatest thing. No matter what it is, shopping when you don't need it is a lesson we can learn from the Amish. They don't necessarily go out shopping for entertainment or sport. I know that our society does a lot of that. I know that I personally have been known to do that as well. Take a lesson from the Amish and avoid over consuming goods and products that we don't need, saving us money. Number 21, save for planned purchases. This means when you need something and you know it's going to happen, you put a little bit of money aside each month and you save for it. When you have the money, you buy it. If there's something that you want, say like remote control blackout blinds for your bedroom because you're working on your sleep and you want to black out as much light as you possibly can. And the fleece pinned curtains that you have up aren't quite doing it. Plus from the outside, they look terrible. Then you're going to save up your money to get those blackout blinds that you really want, but you're not going to buy them on credit. You're going to save your money until you can afford to get them with cash. Number 22, save windfalls. If you have unexpected money that comes in, you put it in the bank for a rainy day. You make sure that your emergency fund is well stocked and that extra money is going to go in to another account just in case. You never know. Just because you have the money doesn't mean you have to spend it. Number 23, another one of my favorites, live debt free. Do not have debt. Do not owe anybody anything. Do not worry about whether or not somebody is going to come and take your house if you don't pay your mortgage because your husband has been sick for months and out of work. If you don't have a mortgage and you don't have debt, then your house is yours. Being in debt also will decrease your opportunities. If you know that you don't have any extra money to spend, then you might miss out on some really fantastic opportunities. If you had the extra money, you could do. For example, investing in real estate. If you're buried in debt and you don't have the savings, when the property across the street comes up for sale and they just want to get out from underneath it and they're only asking $40,000 for it, you might not have that $40,000. But if you're debt free, then you have the money, the liquid, the movement to invest in your first real estate property. Number 24, multi-purpose items. Invest in items and tools that you can use for a number of different things. I'm going to go back to the canning jar example. 
Not only can you use canning jars for your spare change or your leftovers or your pickles, you can use a canning jar for a flower vase. You can put all of your sewing supplies in a canning jar. You can give a canning jar full of brownie mix as a gift if you need to. Canning jars are so versatile. They are a multi-use tool in your home. 25, when I talked about a budget, I touched on this. Handwritten records. Keeping a record of all of your budget and all of your expenses and everything that's going on in your homestead, even the growing guides, how well your crops did last year compared to the year before. What should you grow this year if you're rotating crops? Handwritten notes on those things is an excellent way to keep better records. However, Technology being the way that it is, if you try to save it in your computer, their computer crashes, you don't have those notes anymore. Number 26, no cable. What do they do for entertainment? The kids are always outside playing. No cable means no sitting down in front of the TV and wasting mindless hours absorbing things that won't necessarily benefit you. I mean, yes, there are some of us who watch TV and watch documentaries and learn things from YouTube. However, I know for me, my evenings are spent watching Firefly Lane on Netflix or some cop show that I really love like SWAT. It's mindless relaxation time, but there isn't necessarily a need for it. If I didn't have that, I would probably spend my time reading books, learning to knit, doing embroidery, doing laundry, cleaning the kitchen, endless opportunities available to beat boredom. Number 27, buy local. I love to buy local. As much as possible, I like to buy local. I like to buy from small businesses and the local people around me before, say, maybe Amazon or Walmart. Supporting local farmers is a really fantastic idea. We go to get our eggs from a local farmer about to 10 minutes away. Their eggs are the best eggs that I've ever eaten. Plus, they're cheaper than any grocery store. Cage-free, farm-raised, free-range, eating the bugs, good quality chicken eggs. 28, home education. Consider homeschooling, for example. Now, many of us cannot homeschool our children or just choose not to. However, we can homeschool ourselves, right? We can always increase our education about something by reading the books or watching the YouTube videos, educating ourselves. Be a lifelong learner. And number 29, regular maintenance on your belongings, whether it be your house or your car or your buggy or your horseshoes. Continuing to care for the things that you've invested in will allow those things to last a little bit longer. So those are my 29 frugal tips that you can learn from the Amish. If you like this frugal living stuff, feel free to watch the videos above and we'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.